You know, it seems like we just got AC Wi-Fi devices, and yet that doesn't stop progress because we're already starting to see talk about the next generation of Wi-Fi, 802.11ax. And that is what this video is about because it's pretty exciting. And to give you an idea, the top speeds of AX will be around 10 gigabits per second. Pretty crazy. In this video, I want to really dive deep into the new features, and some of this is really technical, although I will try to explain it in a way that is very easy to understand, so you don't have to worry about it. I didn't even understand much of this stuff before I started reading into it, but it's really not that complicated. And as usual, before we jump right in, I just wanna give a quick shout out to my Instagram account. If you wanna follow me on there, I post pretty cool stuff. It's just at Theo Joe. So, let's get started. All right. First of all, when can we expect this new AX generation of Wi-Fi? And the answer is, it's already here, technically, because ASUS has already released, or announced rather, an AX Wi-Fi router. However, the actual specification for AX is not gonna be finalized probably until 2019, so it's probably gonna be a couple more years before we actually see any real number of devices that will support this. A couple more basic things about AX is that it's gonna use the same 2.4 and five gigahertz spectrums that we're used to, so nothing new there. And it's gonna be especially focused on improving performance in very Wi-Fi crowded areas. So a lot of times interference can be an issue and this is going to help in situations like that. All right, let's get into the advantages of AX over AC, starting with something called Mumimo, multi-user, multi-input, multi-output, which AC does already have, but it's improved in AX. So what Mumimo does is allows the router to connect to multiple devices at once using multiple signals or streams, which would be assigned to different antennas, for example. And this is an improvement of without Mumimo, where you would only be able to connect to one device at any given time, so you'd have to wait before talking to some other device. Even though multiple devices can be connected to one access point, it can only actually transmit to one thing. So AC did have this, but it only allowed one direction of Mumimo connection. So if you're the receiver, such as the router, you can only connect to multiple devices to receive from, but you can't necessarily send out connections in the other direction or the uplink direction. With AX though, it will support both uplink and downlink Mumimo, which means that it'll be able to simultaneously send and receive from multiple devices in both directions. The next feature called OFDMA is a real mouthful. It stands for Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiple Access. Sounds complicated, let me explain. So currently with AC and previous Wi-Fi versions, what happens when a router goes to send a signal is it has to send that signal to one device at any given moment in time on all frequencies. So if it wants to send a signal, it will say, all right, we'll send this packet over all frequencies and then wait to move on to the next one. Unless there's different streams that we talked about before, but let's ignore that. Now, what if you didn't necessarily need to send a lot of data? So sending on all frequencies is kind of overkill and then you have to wait until the next microsecond or whatever to talk to another device. Well, with this new OFDMA, you can split up the spectrum into more subparts so you can talk to multiple devices with multiple frequencies at any given moment in time. So this way, obviously, you might be able to talk to a lot more devices that don't necessarily need to transmit as much data, so you can use less frequency bandwidth, but allow for more connections. So instead of talking to one device on all frequencies, you can talk to three devices on three subdivisions of the frequencies that are available. Moving on, the next feature for AX is called trigger-based random access. This is very technical. I will try to explain it the best I understand in a very simple way so you can understand it as well. How routers currently work is they use something called time frequency resource units to schedule when devices are allowed to connect and send data to it. So you can kind of think of these units like appointments on a calendar. The router will talk to a device and say, okay, you're allowed to talk to me and send your next piece of data at this time on this frequency. And then another device 
might be able to send at another time on a different frequency. And this just allows for efficient scheduling so the router knows when it's gonna get its information and can process everything so it's not getting bombarded. With this new random access feature, it's the equivalent of, say, leaving appointments open in your calendar. So if a device needs to send data that isn't scheduled ahead of time, it will be able to access it if one of those extra blocks are available. So that's kind of why it's called random access. It's if a device wants to send data to something that wasn't planned, it was random. I'm probably not familiar enough with wireless network engineering to say the specific benefits of this, but one thing that comes to mind is maybe say you have a device that wants to send out the data at very low latency. It has something that it wants to get out right away without waiting for an appointment. It can maybe do that and send the data right away and if a open slot, a random access slot happens to be available on the router, they, then it can still receive that data immediately without having to have it wait for an appointment. And by the way, if you haven't figured it out, the time durations I'm talking about here are on the microsecond level. It's not like a device would have to wait several seconds, very small amounts of time. The next feature is called spatial frequency reuse, which is a little bit more easy to understand. Right now how networks usually work is if there's a neighboring network and a device sees signals coming from that, it won't try to send out a signal on the same frequencies that this other network is using because it knows that maybe it'll interfere with things, it won't get through, even if it's not on the same network that it's connected to. But now with this new feature, it will allow devices to kind of look at what's going on with that other network. And if the signal isn't very strong, then it will be able to basically send a little bit of information in front of its own outgoing signal that will identify itself as which network it's coming from. So that way, even if multiple devices from different networks are sending out on the same frequency, they can still be distinguished by their own networks because they'll have identifying information in front of it. So this will allow for more bandwidth use because obviously you don't have to worry as much from interfering networks that might be necessarily not far away. The next new feature is called target wait time. Also pretty easy to understand. This allows a router to send a signal back to a device that it's receiving from and say, hey, don't send any more information until this amount of time because I'm not gonna get it. So it's basically saying, hey, go to sleep and when this time arrives, then start broadcasting. So I guess this is kind of similar to going back with the other thing we were talking about with scheduled appointments. Instead of the device just broadcasting out data constantly until its appointment arrives, the router can say, hold on, just wait until this amount of time, don't waste your energy, and then it will send out the signal when it's specifically needed. So as you can probably imagine, this would help with battery life on battery powered devices and also interference. So the signal wouldn't be constantly broadcasted out from the device, which would interfere with maybe other networks. It would only be sent out specifically when it's needed, which also means that if another neighboring network is using AX, then it's less likely that two signals are gonna collide on the same frequency because they'll only be sent off at certain times. Moving on, the next feature is called dynamic fragmentation. So right now what happens is called static fragmentation. When a router goes to send out a data packet, it will divide it up into fragments, which will all be the same size. With dynamic fragmentation, it can divide these fragments up into different sizes. And this can be useful with those random access units we talked about before. Remember the reserved open slots for appointments? Because this way, a router can divide up a fragment as small as it needs to be to fit into one of those reserved slots. Whereas before, you couldn't divide it, so it might not fit into any of those. But this way, if there's space open, you can get a little bit extra data in early. All right, now this next improvement of AX over AC is gonna take a little bit of explanation. And that is that AX has longer guard interval durations than AC. What the heck does that mean? Well, the thing you need to understand is that if a device sends out a Wi-Fi signal, by the time it gets to the router, it might have bounced a few times. 
and you might have some parts of the signal bounce off the floor, another signal might have bounced off the ceiling, and so you're gonna get different transmissions of the same thing arriving at different times. And this can potentially mess up the transmission because the router might think that it's getting multiple different transmissions even though it's the same piece of data. So to protect against these essential echoes, a device when it sends out a signal will also send out a guard interval, which basically says to the router, hold off on this amount of time before considering any new signals as different transmissions. Or in other words, the device might send a signal that says, hey, you know, anything that arrives within one microsecond of this, don't worry about that, it's just an echo. Anything after that is probably a new signal, but you know, if you get this same message within one microsecond, don't worry about it. So with AC, the available durations were 0.4 or 0.8 microseconds. And with AX, the available durations are 0.8, 1.6 and 3.2. So obviously those can be potentially a lot longer durations. And the difference this will make is if the interval is very short, then you can send out more data quickly because the router will be able to allow new transmissions sooner. But this also means that there could be a lot of errors introduced because some echoes might take longer to arrive than the duration and anything that arrives will be messed up it's not good. But also, if you have a much longer duration, it's a lot less likely you're gonna get these interference errors. However, that also means that you're gonna to have to wait and potentially get slower data because you have to reserve more time between transmissions. And the idea behind these longer intervals is this will work better in outside environments, crowded environments where you might be bouncing something off the wall and it goes across the street and comes back. Obviously you want a longer interval available to use, maybe not to use all the time, but this will at least allow it. All right, now the final improvement of AX is that it has longer so-called symbol durations. Yes, I'm gonna explain this one too. Putting it as simply as I can, a symbol is basically one data unit for whatever method of communication you're using and it persists for some amount of time. Here's an example that's probably a lot easier to understand. Say you're going to dial a phone number. You know when you press a different number, it produces a different tone. You can think of each of those tones as a symbol. It represents one thing, which is one number. So here's an analogy. Maybe the phone line you're using to dial these numbers is very unreliable. It, it cuts out all the time. So what you do to send your message or dial your phone number is you go to the phone company or whoever's on the other side and you make an agreement and you say, okay, to dial this phone number, I'm going to use a symbol duration of one second, which means that I'm gonna dial this phone number and in this case, hold down the, each button one time. It doesn't matter how long you hold down each button or use each symbol because the symbol can persist for any amount of time as long as you agree to it ahead of time. And that's important because now what happens is the other side knows that for say the first second, you're gonna be holding down the first number. For the second second, you're gonna be holding down the next number and so on. That way, even if you press and hold down the button and the other side only hears a very small fraction of the tone, it knows, okay, well, he was holding down the same number that whole time. So it's not like he was wondering if you pressed multiple buttons in that time. So it allows for much less interference if there's longer durations because it's the same thing for longer. So it can wait to see if there's any interference that will go away in that short amount of time. And on the flip side, say you're pressing down very short interval durations, well then that makes it more likely that an interference thing will interfere for the entire duration of that symbol and then, well, that data is lost. So with Wi-Fi, it's the same idea here. You're sending a radio wave in this case for longer, so it's more likely that it will be received even if there's interference. And in the case of A2, it has a duration of 3.2 milliseconds, whereas AX has longer potential ones for 3.2, 6.4, and 12.8. So it can use a lot longer durations if there's a lot of interference at the potential cost of bandwidth, but it's better than not getting the signal at all. So those are a lot of the main features that are improvements of AX 
over AC. Hopefully I was able to explain these technical things in a way that you were able to understand. I think it's pretty cool, but again, I don't know. You guys can let me know what you think. If you wanna keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. You can just click on those. And if you wanna subscribe, I make multiple videos every week. And also be sure to enable notifications or else you might not get those new videos in any case. Again, guys, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.